we will not have to do the little thingy that we did last week, Carrie, where I have to, you know, turn it on to you and then wait for you and all that. You could, you can do that right now if you wanted to, but okay. let's not let me fly for a little while. Good evening, everybody. This is the mea culpa version of last week's class. Um, I have been in not a heated conversation, but a pointed conversation with the Collaborate Ultra people. And as I was telling Mark when we were sitting here talking, um, I didn't realize that Collaborate Ultra was just a pilot program here at University of Louisville. So there we are. Their answer to our problem last week of why it did not record, or actually record it, but didn't stick. Well, I forgot to say that to you, Mark. They actually showed in their database that I was recording. In other words, they could see that this guy came in at this time and was had started recording, but it didn't quote unquote stick. Their answer was that we had jumped moderators in midstream. In other words, I'd given Carrie the, the screen to show us her Google Classroom. So what we're doing tonight is Carrie is coming into this as a moderator. So she has it. She, she can take over anytime she wants. I asked her to let me kind of play for a little while at the beginning, kind of set stages, and then uh, and also answer some of your questions. And then I'm going to take uh, turn it over to her. Um, and then at the end, I'm going to come in and do just a little bit of a song and dance about sites, which is a Google web design um, app that they give you. And the only reason why I show sites to teachers, and Carrie, you feel free to editorialize on this when I turn it over to you, is the one thing that Google Classroom doesn't do is understanding the embeddable code. Um, and they justify that by saying, well, we own YouTube, so you know that's the only embed code we care about. But there's so much good stuff out there, which we're going to visit later on in the, in the class, uh, especially simulations uh, that kids can actually use and do. If we can do that through the Google Sites, which you can very easily, and have that then link back to our Google Classroom so the kids can go off, play around in one of the PHET, otherwise known as FET, uh, simulation sites that are out there, then they can come back into the classroom very easily then and, and do a report back or a comment back, however you want to do it. And Carrie's going to show you all the different ways that kids can interface with her Google Classroom. She is a Google Classroom certified, what are you, level two, level three? What are you now? I have both level one and level two certification. Okay, so she's level two and level one certified. Yeah, You've been doing it for the next four years? Yes, I've used it for four years, and the next um, certification possible would be Google Certified Trainer or right. Innovator. Yep, you need to do that. Um, this is this is I shouldn't be saying this uh, with everybody else in the room, but I'm going to say it to you anyway, Carrie. Do you ever heard of Tierney Brothers? I feel like I should know the name, but it's not ringing a bell. All right, so Tierney Brothers is a reseller of. Um, technology equipment, technology services, technology software. They are located out of Minneapolis. They have a regional office there in Cincinnati. And they hire people to go out into the various, uh, well, you know, the area, Ohio, Kentucky, um, Indiana, I think, and maybe Tennessee. Not sure about Tennessee, but I know Indiana, Kentucky, Ohio. And they hire people to go out when they get their trainer certification and they go out and they actually do the trainings. My PhD student, who's now teaching down at uh, Transy, she had a second income doing that there. That's my little gift to you tonight. Well, thank you. <laughs> and, if, and if you want me to help you grease that skid to get in there, let me know. Very close to the tyranny people. Although I do not buy tyranny stuff. I don't buy it. I just like the way they handle uh, the products they have. All right, let's get going here. So the thing that makes Google Classroom so interesting is uh, Mark is having me coming through his computer, and it's like I'm trapped in an echo chamber. <laughs> I'm going to wait. You good? Okay. 
So the thing that's so interesting about Google Classroom is it kind of came out of nowhere. Um, I have used Schoology in the past, of course, Blackboard, Canvas, Moodle. Um, I'm a Moodle certified uh, person, administrator. And it just sort of came on the scene. And I think the reason why it has just sort of exploded is its simplicity, uh, but also the fact that with more and more one-to-one -one projects coming down the pike and more and more of those looking like Chromebooks, and even if they look like iPads, you still have the ability to have the hooks into the Chrome Classroom. The other thing I think the, the um, Google Classroom caught on to was something the Schoology folks caught on to right away, was they'd had all these hooks. And when I say hooks, I mean apps that can talk directly to Classroom. In fact, some of the things that we play with, um, like Padlet, can talk directly to the Google Classroom. Let me, um, before I forget it, let me have that uh, moment here to talk to you about the Padlet. Okay, the Padlet's fixed, and um, it readily, I readily admit it had a problem, but if we double click in the Padlet now, you can see that the little note pops in. Um, and as I've told you, in the blend space, all you have to do is get that link, click on the link here, paste it in there, and then it'll show up here. It's not the end of the world. Um, if it doesn't still work, just put it in live text. I just like having these because it gives me something to show faculty around here. Uh, when I get invited over to Delphi, which is the library and media services here at UofL, I get invited in to kind of show off things that we play with, with uh, real teachers, and I get invited in to do that with college faculty, university faculty. You talk about a tough audience, man, especially the guys from law school. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that uh, and we're gonna go. So here's the first thing we need to do. If you do not have a Google Classroom already, you are gonna go to classroom.google.com. That simple. You will need to log in with a Gmail account. If you don't have a Gmail account, it's easy to get in the directions are right there in the module. This is a, in fact, in what the, the Gmail and the Gmail, the Google people refer to this, this is a consumer account, what I'm sitting here with. Um, meaning it is not affiliated with any domain that has uh, purchased the rights to be a Google Classroom domain. And you can see that up there because I don't have anything past google.com. What does your domain look like, Carrie? Does it say the name of your school district or your school? Um, it says http classroom.google.com slash u slash o slash h. Yeah, okay. So, so it's, it's kind of all over the place. Um, mm -hmm. Universities who use this, like uh, University of Minnesota, IU, Penn State, if you go to theirs, what it looks like is google.com slash, um, let's see, U, U, U Minnesota slash, and then whatever the name of the college might be. Why does a university go with a Google Classroom? Simple. It's money. Pure and simple money. All right. To create my Google Classroom is as hard as this. You go over here to where the little plus sign is, you click on it, you create a class. Make sure you're saying, you just check the little box. And the reason why you're doing this is so you can have access to the G Suite more than anything else. Now let me assure, let me tell you right up front, those of you who are not teaching yet, who do not have Google Classrooms through your district's domain, you're not gonna be able to pull this over. So I'm not looking for big, deep stuff here. I just want you to see what's possible. And when Carrie takes over, get ready, because you're going to see what can be, what's possible. So I'm going to go ahead and continue at this point. I'm going to give my class a name. I'm going to call it Swan IT. Um, I'm not going to do any of the other stuff I don't need to. I'm going to create. Takes it a couple of seconds to... Uh, I guess it's looking through the entire thing of the Google verse to see if there's a Swan IT floating around out there somewhere. And now when you land here, you're looking at structure. K 
kids don't see this structure, okay? They see a different structure. Things I want you to see when you're looking around this page is, you'll notice in the upper left, there's your name of your uh, class. You can change that, by the way. You have three, three tabs across the top. The stream is exactly what you think it is. It's the flow. It is what you are creating to let kids have access to. The class work, sorry, they changed the name of it. The class work is where you actually do the creation piece. And I have my ideas about how you do that. I'm a big believer in topics being created first um, because that's just the way, you know, I have been trained uh, as a Blackboard user, Moodle user, all the other things I've been trained in. Other teachers basically have a very free form. I find free form very confusing as a student. Carrie, I'll let you carry that water. And then the last tab here is teachers and students. This is how you get people in. Now, most school districts, uh, well, I shouldn't say that. In Jefferson County Public Schools, this part's already filled in. They pull their data from Infinite Campus and they populate it with the kids in here. Uh, they have a really difficult task in Jefferson County because of the transient nature of our schools. Kids move from school to school to school. And so far, from what I've been told, and I was just there on Tuesday um, talking with them about a totally different issue, we are seeing that it's working very well. What they're going to start using is something called the digital backpack. Now, this is just in Jefferson County. Well, Jefferson County and maybe another, but I'm not sure about that, but for sure in Jefferson County. And the hook is every kid when they come into their Google Classroom also have a link that takes them to their digital backpack. What's it for? So the digital backpack is nothing more than a folder within a Google Drive. And that folder is where the kid will put their um, demonstrations of understanding that they think are their best work in various content areas. Schools are forming committees that basically at fifth grade, eighth grade, and twelfth grade, for right now, are forming committees that basically quiz kids. In other words, show us your best stuff. Why do you think this is your best stuff? What I'm finding interesting, and let me see if I can show you an example of that. I was given access to one. Hey, Steve. Uh, yo, go. Can you go back to your stream so that we can see your class code, and then Mark and I can add ourselves to your Google Classroom if he's in his Google. Yeah, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. But let me just let me get this. I want to get this out because the people who are here in JCPS, I just want them to kind of see what it could look like, and I don't see it. All right. So what I want to show you next is the code. So right here is the code to join this class. Now, for our purposes only for this course, this is what you're going to do to get into mine. When you get ready after you've made your course, you can do it one of two ways. You can either email me with that code, or you can come up here to where it says teacher, and you can invite me in to your class at svswan02 at Louisville. Louisville. Come on, Steve. Get your fingers working. It's cold in here tonight. At louisville.edu. See, there it is. It pops up. Surprised it didn't show my little face. Okay, so I've invited myself in <laughs> to my own class. You can do it that way, or you can just send me the link, which would be that code that Carrie just mentioned that I just showed you. Let me look real fast and see if I can find this, because I do want to let now, you see. Steve, that code was not readable. You need to click on the boxes so we can see it big enough. So we Okay, can thank you, dear. You're welcome. Boom. You know, the you would think that the legally blind guy would be aware of that, Carrie. 
That's okay. You got it, buddy? Okay. So if you go back to your people tab, you should see both Mark and I listed. There you go. Let me do a refresh real fast. I'm not in here. You have to select it. So, how did you, how did you do it? Did you I'm use on my it? own right now? I'm okay. Like, I've already set up some round playing pairing classrooms. Okay, good, well, good for you. So all you need to do is go back to your front page, in other words, where your classes are were created. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, and then when you come over here, where the plus is. Click on that and then join class. Oh, okay. That's all you do. All right. Let me, now that I'm back out here, let me go look and see if I can see this. Maybe he kicked me out. Yep, he did. I guess they didn't want him letting someone see the digital backpack. Well, heck. So the digital backpack, as I said, is nothing more than a folder inside the kids uh, drive it's all it is the thing that makes it interesting is every year that the kids uh, when they move from fourth grade to fifth grade to sixth grade so on what's going to happen is they're going to run a script and that script will take everything they put into the drive for that school year it will then compress it compile it if you will into a folder so that after, say, four or five years as a kid, when I go back and look, I'll see a folder called 2018, 2019, 2019, 2020, 2020, 2021. You'll see these folders, and within that will be the collection of what kids do. The problem I have with it, I don't have a problem with it. I think this is a classic example of convergence. Uh, you all know what convergence is. It's the idea about ideas that finally kind of start coming together. So what is the convergence that's going on here? We've been talking about one-to-one -one kids using technology in schools for over 20 years. Um, it first started off with the idea, could we have kids bring their laptops to school and could we harden the networks in school so if a kid brings in a buggy, virus-ridden laptop, he wouldn't um, infect the rest of the network in the school and the rest of the network in the school district. We solved that problem. Then when we started actually seeing um, wireless coming into schools, the next step from that, well, let's give every kid in some schools a laptop. And that had its issues. But as we now have moved into this era of tablets and Chromebooks specifically, what we're seeing is the infrastructure is very solid now in supporting it. Now we have this, the Google Classroom, which gives us a place for kids to have their work and teachers to have their work. And I think the whole thing about so why the Google Classroom, without sounding too cynical about it, I think was driven by cost. It's so much simpler to work with the Google because it's so big. Um, teachers have unlimited storage capacity on their drives. Because of that sort of thing that's going on, I think that's why they've won out. I click on the settings so you can get an idea where things live. Uh, what I wanted you to see was here in the stream, this is one of the first things that you have to have a conversation about. And this might be a conversation with your department. It might be a conversation with your PLC, uh, grade groups. Are we going to let kids post and comment? I'll let Carrie speak to this when we go look at her stuff. Uh, I'm a big believer in allowing kids to post and comment because I think one of the things that we're trying to do with all of this is we're trying to embed the ideas of digital citizenship into the use of the digital classroom. If we can get kids to understand how civil discourse is done, how we can have critical friends, all those things that we've blathered on about for years in education, 
we now have a place, again, going back to the idea of convergence, we have a place where all of this actually takes place. Um, when I was working with a group of kids uh, in a, a world situation, frankly, international situation, we came up with something that we called praise question proposed, PQP. And so whenever a kid went into a comment on an idea or an activity or anything that someone had posted into the uh, comment forum, we always said you had to use the PQP to start off with. In other words, it was your step into the conversation. It wasn't the end of the conversation. It was your step into the conversation. And so you basically came into the conversation by praising whatever it was that you were reading about. Questioning, in other words, there was a part of it you either didn't understand or you're saying, have you ever thought about it this way? And then the proposed part of it was, could we look for some research? Could we share some ideas back and forth within this comment forum? Gosh, if you can get kids to buy into that kind of thing and it doesn't come, you know, it doesn't come overnight. It is something you have to work on very diligently. But if you can get that to work, then it really, really takes the whole uh, online experience to a whole new level. And you get out of the you get out of the traps of the the I call it the yo mama comments, the the with bullying, obviously. You get out of that. And then, of course, within the classroom, I can basically tell people, well, you're not going to be allowed to do that. I'm going to click on class work. I have to keep saying that <laughs> because this is where your work starts. And I'm going to let my friend take over here in just a minute. But I wanted you to see what it looked like. So when you go in here and you click on the create, the assignment is where you basically can build an assignment. Quiz assignment is basically where you can create a quiz using what's called the Google Forms. Steve likes the Google form, Forms a lot. Um, but as you'll see, when we come up to the whole module we do on assessment, there's a whole lot of other stuff out there that all now have hooks back into the classroom. So it's, it's an interesting, you know, it's, it's a feast of excess that you have as a teacher. There's so much good stuff out there. Uh, question. I'm going to throw this at you, Carrie, to talk about here in a minute. But okay. the question to me is a good way to kind of have that organizing question around ideas that you can let kids gnaw on. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be a question. Okay. Realize the only one up here that really puts you into something is the assignment. Well, and the quiz assignment as well. But when you get to question material, these things, you know, can can take on different aspects depending upon what you want to use them for. Again, within the Google Classroom, um, I think this is a powerful thing that it can do is because of the simplicity, I can turn these into what I want them to be. I think that material becomes an organizing feature that helps you as a teacher put things in there that kids will use. So that then, because we have the ability to comment through either the question, then kids have, or through the assignment, kids have a way of looking at the materials, seeing the things they need to work with, coming back into assignment or coming back into questions, and then giving their feedback on it. And then here's the big one down here. <laughs> um, topics. So... One of the things that drove those of us who have been Google Classroom uh, users for a while was the original topics could not be changed or moved. In other words, they basically fell into the first one you made was the last on the list. So on, so on, so on. That now has all changed. You can now move topics up and down within the stream. And when you do that, I think you have the flexibility now as a teacher to be able to say, okay, we're not really ready yet to do this, but we are ready to do this, and I can slide it up into the stream where I want it to go. We have a class drive folder over here, which is nothing more than a Google Drive, folks. And when you get into here, 
this is where I'm going to let her show this to you because she's got an incredible one. When you get into here, I think all training with Google Classroom should start here. I don't know what Carrie thinks about that. She's a level two. I'll let her put her opinion in when I turn it over to her. But I think this is where you really start. This is where you get all the stuff together. Um, I know that in JCPS, a lot of this stuff gets, gets given to you in your various learning groups, in your grade groups, your department groups, your PLCs. Um, when you click on the, the new button up here, as you can see, you've got all kinds of ability to keep everything right here. You can do your docs, you can do your sheets, you can do your slides. Uh, we could probably spend an entire two or three classrooms talking about docs, sheets, and slides. Um, th there's some really amazing capacities now in these three simple I, I, I have no problem saying to people, and in fact, um, I serve on a Blackboard uh, group here at the University of Louisville, and one of the things I have been lobbying very, very hard for is for our Blackboard to have a TLI. Well, TLI is nothing more than the way for Blackboard to have an outside um, group or organization, or in this case, a, a corporation, to be able to put things into our Blackboard space. We are now going to have a TLI that will bring the G Suite into Blackboard. So those people who um, want kids to have an easy way to do collaboration, that want kids to have an easy way to do uh, PowerPoint presentations, AKA slides, and the same thing with Excel, AKA sheets, will be able to do that through the Blackboard space here at the University of Louisville. I'm putting that one up as a win. <laughs> Um, let's see, you know, you've got more stuff out here. Um, you know, uh, hey, Carrie, do you have Wii Video turned on your Chromebooks? Um, I don't know. I haven't played with it if we do. Okay. Go fast. I was with a, a class no. uh, at a elementary school where they were playing with it. I was extremely impressed with what the kids were doing. And as you can see down here, you can connect more apps. So you can see this thing goes deeper and deeper and deeper. That's why I think the whole thing really should start with Drive. Okay, I'm going to pop back into where I was. And what else? And the Google Calendar is the Google Calendar. You know, you can put your assignments in here so kids will know what's coming. Uh, this, to me, is a no-brainer. This is how you just do things now, folks, in this amazing time that we live in. Over here in your waffles is another place where you can get to your stuff that you're allowed to have access to. I am towed, I am towed by the good folks uh, at, in JCPS that this is controlled, okay? In other words, you won't see all the stuff you could possibly see. in. That's here. true, State, because my county has certain things turned on and off. And we have right. certain things turned on for different levels. So teachers have more access um, than high school students. High school students have more access than middle school students. Middle school students have more access than elementary students. Don't so you find it cool. interesting that Earth is not in here? That is, well, you cannot, if you scroll down your gray bar, there should be some more things down below. Um, no, I don't. You see so, that more? Oh, there's more. Okay, let's go see more. Yes, and you can actually drag those tiles around and organize it the take, way you want it to be. Take something out, put something in. There's Earth. Yes. Good. Yeah, I think um, I think one of the really underutilized tools, and I'm talking to my friend who's sitting across from me here, uh, is the Google Earth. Uh, especially when it comes now to the Google Earth tours that you can make. And there is an amazing uh, YouTube channel on the possibilities of using Google Earth tours. I think it's one of those, one of those apps. And let's see. I'm going to bring it to the top. Well, it's not going to let me, carry. Come on. Let's go up. Let's, let's become a part of the waffle. All right. It's there. Ah, there it is. Ta-da. Just had to play with it for a little bit. Okay. So I now have Earth in here. 
Uh, I think Google Earth is a really, really underutilized tool. Okay, I think I'm done until we get to sites. You ready to take over, lady? Sure thing. All righty. So I'm going to basically just back out. And now you can jump in and remember how you did it. You basically go over here to the little um, icon. We got there. it. Sir. It says share content and give us your screen. All right. So you should now see my screen. Yes. Yes. And let me make sure here I see your microphone working. Can you hear me now? Oh, yeah. I can hear you fine. I just want to make sure that the, you know, doohickey can hear you. And let's do one last thing to be safe. Okay. Everybody see it? <laughs> it's still recording. All right. All right. So I'm going to start at my drive just because you were talking about starting place. And I agree. Our drive is a really important thing. Um, hold for, on, hold on, we're, hold on. We're not seeing you in the big window. Let me go back here and did you share? Entire screen. Entire screen. Share. Okay. Mm. Pick your, no, no, you don't have to log out. See, it still just sees you as a student. Try clicking on where it says uh, Carrie Gupton there, Carrie. There you go. Can you see me now? Yep. Yep. Awesome. Thank you, dear. <laughs> All right. So our drive is a big thing. Whenever I got hired at McKinney High School, which is my current um, school system that I work for, um, they started talking about how they were going to take away the G drive, which the G drive was the great big hard drive that they store all the things for the district at the board office. And so since they said, you know, they're going to take it away, my thought was, why should I learn the old system when there's a new system that everybody wants to use? So I decided to just jump both feet into Google Drive. And um, as you can see, I have 55.5 gigabytes of stuff in here. Um, and a lot of that has to do with videos. I've got different videos saved, like I've downloaded um, from YouTube or whatever, um, or videos that I've done of myself presenting different things. Students have turned in different assignments, and some assignments I turn give them back. Uh, I return them to students through Google Classroom. Um, but there are other things that I hold on to, like our non-traditional instruction days. If we have a snow day, um, then I hold on to that work digitally um, because the rule is we're supposed to hold on to it for the remainder of that school year and the following school year. And uh, 150 kids times however many days of snow each year is a lot of paperwork for me to keep track of. Um, and I don't have that much space in my classroom since I'm a science teacher. Most of my stuff, you know, most of my space is taken up with actual science equipment. So I chose to use Google Classroom to collect all their stuff. And because when they turn assignments in, I become the owner. And then it's mine until I do something else with it. And since Google gives you a terabyte of storage, which is basically infinity, um, then there's no reason for me not to just store it in Google Classroom. That way, if they ever come in and ask me to see certain work from a certain student from a certain snow day, I can go into my archive classes and find it real fast. So that's what I do. Um, but as you were talking about, I use my folders and I numbered my folders because this is my number one folder I use at the beginning of every day. Um, this is the second one. Um, which is that's my classroom folder that's connected to my Google classes. Um, but then I've got all these other resources, very few loose things down here. Um, be, I will save things, but then I go put them in folders. And the thing is, you can see I have a me County files. We have shared files, um, which our PLC docs is what replaced our G drive. So, I'm science, so because I'm science, I color-coded it. I doubt the other science teachers even realized it, but I color-coded it so it would stand out um, from the other ones. And That's then, do what? That's good practice. You know, anything yes. 
do to help kids with visual cues? Yes. So this is my biology PLC folder um, and we name our units and then we renumber them. So actually this unit 9, unit 10, unit 11 was just renumbered. We renumber them every year as we tweak them and decide which order we want to do. And that's why we have like ecology and genetics up here. Um, human body systems we used to teach. We don't really teach anymore. Um, but, you know, we used to have end of course tests. We don't do ECOCs anymore. At least they've restructured it and who knows exactly what they're doing. Um, but this is our biology and so because there are so many people that have their fingers in it we very we are very much structured in using our folders and then within our folders like we're on meiosis and genetics right now and within our folders we are very specific about what we name things and um, try to because things that i would name th names that make sense to me don't always make sense to other people and um, so that's why we're so big on folders Whereas I was telling Steve last week, and the math teacher next door, their PLC is not as sharing, maybe is a good word. Um, and so she names everything and she names it with a standard number and with the content and with, I don't know, she like the names for all of her files are up to million characters long um, and she doesn't use folders. So her drive, whereas mine is nice and neat and you can easily see stuff, her drive probably looks more like this recent folder that I've got going on where it's just a massive never ending or the shared with me where it's just never ending files that you can see. Um, so different strokes for different folks, but I'm a very organized person. And because we've got so many people on our PLCs um, folders and names are just really important to us. So once we go into classes, which you can see, this is my this is my personal email. So this is the one where I added Steve's Swan IT class. But this class is this is my school classroom. So I teach three sections of biology. I have two integrated sciences and um, I'm the STLP coordinator. I am considered a student in our MCHS staff classroom, our principal. Um, and it, you can see she added her picture and I've got my picture on mine. So when my students pull up their Google Classroom, they see my picture next to biology or integrated. But that way I talked with her at the end of last year. And one of the ways because we were going to one to one Chromebooks this year, we talked about one of the best ways to help teachers understand what students were seeing was if student if teachers saw what students saw. So in Google Classroom, you can be a teacher of a classroom, but you can also be students of classrooms. And so I've got these that I'm the teacher of, but then I'm the student of this one down here. And this is how she shares information on professional development base. And, and it's, again, it's just modeling for the other teachers that maybe are not as familiar with Google Classroom. That way they can kind of see from another perspective how it works. Now I also have STLP um, at the high school. So I can actually drag and drop. This is a cool feature that they've added in the last couple of weeks. If you want to reorganize, and I showed my students this earlier this week, that they can drag and organize their classes so that they're in first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth period order, which makes it easier for them. Sorry, my throat's dry. Um, and I made this example <coughs> so that I could kind of show you some of the features. So what I did was I created a class just like Steve showed us. You go hit the plus button and um, name your class and then it'll start one. And so what I do is I name my class, so it's either biology or integrated science, but then I give it a class description. And so this is where I put um, the years because I've got year, several years worth of classes now, you know, five classes a year at least. Um, I put the whatever the school year is here because whenever I go back over here, you can see 
it shows biology first period 2018 2019 it just it's a way that's easier for me to see at a glance it's and whenever I open it this way it'll tell me which period I'm looking at and um, but it also helps students see that so what I did was whenever I created this I had a couple of my teacher friends I called them their classrooms and said hey I'm going to add you to this Google Classroom. I need you to, it's just a dummy class. I need it. So my husband, of course, got hold up. added. Hold up. Carrie, hold up. We lost you again. We quit showing you. Um, will you please go up and click on where, do you see the two heads where like you've got Mark and you there? Yes. Okay. Three. Try going in and opening. Yeah. Don't click on Mark. Click on you. And then go back into your panel and share with us again. I think that's the problem. Ultra is, is dropping you. Are you inside school right now? Ooh, did I lose her? Uh, yeah, it made me reload the session, like the entire thing. Yeah. So I'm back. Okay. I, I am at my house right now. Okay. Are you on a cable modem uh, or? No, I'm Wi-Fi. Okay, there's your problem. <laughs> <laughs> Wi-Fi is dropping here once in a while. That's fine. You're the, we're back. So good. Go ahead and pick up where you left off there. Okay, so in my class, so in this dummy class, I called some of my friends and that are Google savvy, and said, "Hey, I need some students in my dummy class. Will you join?" Um, that way I could show you some stuff with names instead of showing you my students names just because I don't know whose student which students names need to be protected and whose don't um, so what I did was I called them said hey will you be a dummy class participant for me and then I just clicked on invite and I typed in their name and sent them an email invite and this is actually what I did this year we went to one one Chromebooks and um, for seventh through twelfth grade and we actually at the high school passed out Chromebooks a week before school started. And um, now we have about 1600 kids on our campus. So, I mean, it's, that was a pretty hefty undertaking. We took three days um, and had a variety of hours so that parent working parents could choose the time that worked best for them. Um, but kids could come in, they could get their schedule and pay their dues and pick up their Chromebook a week before school started because we did not have an open house this year. Um, and that really, I think, was a great thing. I think we only had about uh, 200 kids who didn't come pick up their Chromebooks before school started. Wow. So that's, that's pretty awesome. But it also gave our kids the opportunity to play with it before they had to work with it, um, which is, I'm, as a science teacher, as I'm but also as a teacher teacher I started as elementary and I'm very big on Montessori and giving kids the opportunity to play so as soon as I had my final class list I went through and invited my students this way um, by typing in every single one of their names and inviting them to class so I type in their name and let me who can I add who's an I can add this one she's gonna she will be okay with me. So click on her, click invite. So you can see these people have been added because they're in bold, but this one is still invited. So that means they have not accepted my invitation. So you can either, like you showed us, show the class code in person and that's what I did for kids who didn't accept the email invitation or maybe they had a different email than what was in the system and um, whenever on the first day of school and that is what I did like as soon as they walked in the door on the first day I said welcome to class get out your Chromebooks we've got work to do and from the get-go I made that expectation of every single day you are going to need your Chromebook and um, and that has been a tremendous like I've got kids who don't use Chromebooks in any other class and they will come in my room and say Miss Captain I'm so sorry I forgot my Chromebook and I have an extra Chromebook but it's from our old versions we had before we picked our 300 E's and um, but that's 
setting that expectation, my kids, very rarely do I have a kid that doesn't have a Chromebook or their, maybe their Chromebook is almost dead, but they've plugged in. They know the expectation is to have their Chromebooks and ready to go. And actually only two weeks ago, I saw my first like massive damage to a screen. So we've gone this far into the school year and just let two weeks ago, this kid, he said it was in his backpack and when he pulled it out, it was like that. But it was like a puncture wound into the glass of the screen. So I'm not buying that story. But anyway, I was impressed that we got that far without any major damage. So um, you invite people and then this is the stream. And the what the default stream is to show condensed notifications. And what that means is as you scroll down, you can see it just barely shows you anything. And um, I didn't like that. Like Steve said, visual clues, visual context is huge. Um, and so two weeks ago, we just talked about this last week, didn't we, Steve? Yep. Um, yeah, I think it was last Tuesday or Wednesday because we were doing a dry run for junior ACT. Um, and I saw Alice Keeler tweeted that you could now show attachments and details in the stream. And so I went through for all of my classes and fixed this because now it shows and see my friend made a class comment. So this would be a teachable moment about digital citizenship. I would go over here and say click on him and say action I want to mute you so muted students can still submit work do you still see me no you popped out all right we back not yet did you go down and try to share your screen again there, uh, we, go. there we go we're back we're back all we're right back. So muted students can still submit work. Other students won't see their work. So if you have them doing answering a question and you want them to converse with each other, like we, what we do on discussion boards in um, Blackboard, and they can submit work to you. And as the teacher, you can see it. But no other student is going to be able to see what they did. And um, they will not be able to reply to other classmates work and they can't comment or post on anything. So what I do, so I, and at the beginning of the year, I did have a couple of gentlemen, and I use the term loosely, um, that chose to make some inappropriate comments on some assignments. So I went in and I muted them. And so you can see now it shows a little red um, strike through. That lets me know he's muted. Whenever I go to classwork, if I were to click on this assignment, um, it's also going to show me right here. So again, he said, you know, he's going to get a hundred percent on this. So I can see this, but nobody else would be able to see that. And so what I would do after having that individual conversation, um, and then being on probation, you know, for however long I can then go back, I can click on him, check mark him, and then I can unmute him and allow him to rejoin um, the conversation. So now Casey has joined my class. She's probably going to send me a text message and say, what the heck are you doing? Um, but this, that work, that works really well. So this is an example of a quiz assignment. So as you can see, this is my example. So there's not much here, but if you go create quiz and that's what I did here. Um, it will let you see. Now, I signed up for the beta locked mode on Chromebooks, and and I signed up for it as soon as they announced it. I just got that beta mm -hmm. last week. Like, I think it was last Friday I got the email that I had been allowed to join beta. But my friend Heather, and um, who signed up after I did, got access to it almost a month ago. So I have no idea what their algorithm is for choosing who gets access to beta, but whatever. Um, so you can choose to turn on locked mode. And what that means is respondents will not be able to open tabs or other applications while taking this quiz. Now, there's a lot of information out there about whether you are truly assisting their learning or the, is it just regurgitation? 
you know, if it's really just regurgitation, is it really assessing them and getting them ready for the 21st century? There are so many conversations going on. So all I know is whenever they're tested, they're not allowed to cheat. So when it, and that's what I have to do as a classroom teacher. So I turned on beta mode. Um, and what that does is allows them to, when they take their Google form quiz, um, they can't move anywhere else. So that's pretty glorious um, and makes it more likely. So you give it a title. This is where you can have that conversation uh, with other teachers around. So what are we trying to do here with our test? Yes. Right. Yes. Um, to me, if I'm giving a formative assessment, which should be as close to instruction as possible. Yeah, I'd want to have it muted. Because what I really want to know is what do you know? What do you know after I've taught you now for this week or even just <coughs> today? Yeah. I think, though, under summative, if I set it up right to where I'm asking kids to go and not only think, but also explore and find information, I don't know. I really have to sit and, and think about that one, Carrie, mm -hmm. about allowing them to get out of, you know, get out of the test and maybe jump. Now, the problem I can see, of course, right away is it's so easy to go in and find a resource highlight copy paste you know yes and basically claim that's your answer so mm -hmm. this is good this is a I, this is a feature i didn't know about this yes is, this is an interesting feature so this is a beta mode so it's not available to the general public but like i said i signed up for it way back when they first announced it and told several of my friends about it heather got it well over a month ago and she started using it in her in her classroom and she ran into an issue and so she called me she said have you used it yet and i'm like um i don't have access to it yet so she got she's got to play with it more than i have um just because she got access to it before i did um so i haven't actually used it yet um because like i said i got it i got it last week and i haven't d used any accessible Google Forms. Like I did use a Google Form in biology earlier this week. Um, could I have used a question and said probably, but I liked the idea of having that, um, have and having the answers of all three of my classes that I were, that I was polling for information. And um, so I chose to use a Google Form. So something I like, um, the points are always 100 points to start. You can choose it's ungraded. Um, and then you choose your due date for when you want it to be due. Mm -hmm. You give it a topic. So this was from my unit six chemistry for integrated. And then I have to put on grade importing. Let me stop you there. Go yes. back to the topic. The mm -hmm. topic represents the topic, right? That you created within the classwork structure. Is that yes. correct? Yes. Okay. I just want folks to see what she's doing here is she's got these topics created and this is how she can then create something else, Google form, Google test. And then she puts it into the topic where she wants it to go. Um, I think a lot of times when people start looking at assignments and all of that, they're kind of like, well, I made an assignment. What do I do with it now? Mm -hmm. This is what you do with it now. Yeah. So Put it into the topic. Topics are very similar to what tags used to do for like blog right. posts and things. Right. And it, it's just a way of organizing. So I, the topics that I use are generally whatever the unit top, the unit name is. So it usually has unit, the number, and then the big picture. So in integrated, my unit six is about chemistry. So un, unit six chemistry is the name of the topic, and everything that I do, the vocabulary, the work, the notes, everything gets posted under unit six. That way so it's all together. We're, we're back to that chicken or egg question again here. Do you go through and create all the topic structures and then populate them? Or do you create as you go along? In other words, I'm going to create an assignment that's going to be based upon what we're studying, so on and so on. I mean, I, Again, my, my bias is I go through and make all the topic structure first. 
And if I've got a textbook, if I've got something, a curriculum that's giving me those unit one is about this, two is about that, three is about that. That's an easy to me. I just go in and, and create that right off the bat. And that way, then when I go and actually start putting things in, then it's a no brainer because the Google Classroom is going to do it for me. It's going to say, well, where do you want this to go? I want it to go in that topic and it drops it in. And the same thing works within your, your drive as well. You can go in, you can say this thing goes over here into mm -hmm. this topic. It's, I just, I think that, and maybe I'm beating this dead horse too much, but I think it's really important for teachers who are doing this for the first time to think about organization right out of the, out of the bat. Don't worry about what assignments are going to look like. Don't worry about any of that yet. Get your organization down first because you're going to keep coming back to that. And if you don't do it, you're going to find yourself kind of going, well, now where would this go? And you, what you'll see when you see this is when you go in and look at people's streams who haven't done a very good job of organizing, you'll see a topic or two, but then you just see this stuff willy nilly in the stream. And as a kid, I wouldn't know what to do with that. You know, a teacher might be standing there going, now everybody go to here. Okay. But then what do I do with that afterwards? I mean, it, to me, you've got to have that structure in here first before you start building. Because the assignments are nothing to build. I mean, it's not that hard to do. Well, take us into your form, uh, your, your uh, test here. Here's okay. This, so looks like. first, let me hit save. Okay. Um, so because I already posted it, all I had to do was hit save because I was clicking on it. So as you can see, I can tell that I've got three people who have completed this quiz and I've got two people who have not. So if I click on view assignment, um, it will show me these three kids have done it, these two have not. And this is the thing why I clicked on import grade. As long as you have your quiz, which I'll go in and show you what the Google, how to do that. Um, but as long as you have it keyed as a quiz, after you assign it, it just kicked me out, didn't it? I wonder why it's doing that. We lost you again. I don't know. It's like it doesn't like forms. <laughs> I guess. It doesn't like forms. Okay, there we go. And um, so I'm going to click on import grades. And this is what, there is a lot of front loading I do with Google Classroom. I do a lot of the work before I even start class. But the reason I do it is because it makes class go so fast. Mm -hmm. And there's no, well, what are we going to do now? Well, hold on, wait for the technology. Hold on, I've got to figure this out. Like I have things ready to go, and then there is no waiting. And so what I do. I've got it keyed as a quiz. I click on import grades. Are you sure you want to import grades? Importing grades will overwrite the current grades in Classroom. Yes, please. And so I sit here and I wait and oh look. Obviously, they weren't paying attention in class the other day. Wow. Now, remember, these are my friends who I just said, hey, go be a dummy student and click a bunch of things. I don't care what you get. So honestly, their score should be awful because not a single one of them is a science teacher. Um, but that this is very easy because I now see this is what their scores were. Notice it says graph. That means that I can see it, but my students cannot. Um, and then I will open a second tab, and I will have Infinite Campus open on one side, and I'll have Google Classroom open in another, and it's very easy to go down through Infinite Campus in my grade book and put their scores in really fast. Go up there to Heather and click on her little snowman. You know, the three little dots there on the right hand side. Oh, you're talking about the three dots? Yeah. Okay. So you can choose to return work individually. Um, you can return work to all your students. And so that's whenever you've got students who haven't done it yet, it's going to tell them, hey, guys, you've got a zero on this. Yeah. Um, and then these kids will cease. Or you can choose just to do turned in. So since these two weren't here, I'm well, this one was here, but the rest of them weren't. You know, these are who I want to return and say, this is what your score was. So I'm going to hit return. It's going to ask, do you want to send each student a private comment? And so a lot of times what I'll do is I'll say grades are now posted in IC. That way they know Infinite Campus is up to date. Um, and then I'll click on return. And so now it has gone back to them. And uh, it's still saying, well, I guess because it's due tomorrow. 
he's not in trouble yet. Um, but that way, these are graded, and these know that they need to do. And now look what's happened. I've got zero turned in, I've got two assigned, I've got three graded. And I love that workflow. It lets me know where I am. Not only does it show me there, but whenever I open my to-do, so this shows me all the work I've got for all my classes. So you can see I've got some work to do. Um, but I can tell right here where I am. Like science starters, this is my bell work. It's due tomorrow. We'll do it. We'll finish it in the morning. You know, zero kids have turned it in. Why? Because it's not due yet. Um, however, over here on this bonding quizzes game that we played, 20 kids have turned it in. Four of them are done and it's been returned, and six of them haven't hit that turn in button yet. So tomorrow in fourth period, we'll be having a conversation that I've got six kids who need to get that taken care of because that was due on March 4th. Um, so it's, I love this to do. They took it away at the beginning of the school year when they revamped Google Classroom. I was one of those teachers that went through and said, what are you doing? Give me my to do back. Google said that that's too clunky. They don't like it. Um, I just, I'm like, well, until you figure out a better solution, give me what I need. So they gave it back finally. I know I wasn't the only teacher. So this is my Google Classroom, and this is where Steve was talking about my topics um, and my assignments are a million scrolls long. You can see this is an entire year's worth. Um, that we just scroll on and on and on. Now, I do not create all my topics to start with. Um, right. So right. you can see this is one of my units. It's upcoming. Um, but the thing is, because this assignment is a draft, um, my students do not see this. Show um, us how you do that, Carrie. Show us how you turn that off. How you turn it on. So the only way to turn on my topic is to post something to the topic. Right. So right. I would have to go in, edit this, and hit the assign button in order for them to actually see this. So what I did was I was going through some of my archive assignments, and I remembered that we had done this ecology lab. And so I wanted to remind myself that we want to do this ecology lab this year. Um, and so that's why I made it as a draft in my classroom because it reminds me, hey, this is here. I need to edit this. I need to make sure we do this, but I'm not ready for our students to see it yet. So that's why I have it saved as a draft right now. Um, it's just letting me know I need to do that. So up here at the top, um, and this is actually a good time because tomorrow is the last day of the third nine weeks. So I'm going to create a new material. Now the difference between assignments, questions, materials, a material does not have a point value attached to it. It is solely information you want students to have access to, um, but they're not necessarily going to do, like turn something in with it. So I'm going to create a material because I'm going to have my fourth nine weeks daily science agenda. So that's my title. And um, if I wanted to post it to all of my classes, I could very easily come up here to my drop down carrot and I would click on all five of my sections will need to be able to see this. So it'll post all five at the same time. And um, whenever you do that, it takes away your ability to pick and choose which students. Um, so if I only wanted particular students in my first period, um, or I guess my example, so we keep student names private, come on. Oh, I am in first period. It won't. Like if I click on example, it won't let me unclick first period. Okay, anyway, I could click on this all students arrow and it would pop up a checklist of all of the students enrolled in first period and I could uncheck any students. I don't want to see this post. So that's pretty easy. And I give it a description if I need to. I don't need to. And then I choose to give my daily science agenda no topic um, to start with because I want it to have a home at the top of the list. So it does not have a topic because 
I want it at the top. Some che teachers choose to put that day's work at the top of the list and then assign it a topic at the end of the day. Um, so that way it's easy for students every day they know just to check the top of the classwork page. That sounds like a lot of extra work to me. So I just use topics from the get-go. And the only thing that doesn't have a topic is my daily science agenda. And the reason I post my daily science agenda is because that way students who are absent for whatever reason can go figure out what the heck we did. And then when they come and ask me what they what they missed, I'll say, did you check Google Classroom? Right. Look down. At, let me see if I'm with you on this. Is the agenda something that's now a doc you're going to pull in or is it just you're going to write something there in the description box? And so there are four options to attach things. You have file, upload from your computer. You can attach something from Drive. You can attach something from YouTube. You can attach an outside link. So I'm going to click on Drive. And so you have options here. You can upload, recent, my Drive, Team Drive, Starred. So if I go into my Drive um, and I go into Daily Slides and I click on Fourth Nine Weeks, Okay, I haven't actually made one yet. So I'm going to go over here into my drive real fast. Sure, I, I get what you're doing. And I can very quickly take my third nine week. Yeah. And I'm going to just, because I like the layout that I've created, um, I'm going to copy the slide. Maybe. Come on, Sally. This is what I run into in the afternoons at school, Google takes forever to load. So I'm going to copy this slide and then I'm going to go back into my fourth nine weeks and say new Google slides. Paste it in. Yep. As soon as it loads. Give it a name. Now I can leave it untitled, but that drives me bonkers. Also, if you're using the same slide between different slide decks, um, you can choose to link slides and then whenever you edit the slide in one deck, it will also edit the slide in the other deck. Um, but I don't want to do that, so I'm going to say do not link. Kids will leave this untitled and it drives me bonkers. Naming conventions are so important, so I'm going to call this fourth nine weeks science agenda okay so now I'm going to come back over here to classes wrong classes this classes um, I'm going to have to cancel this because it's got to reload um, but it should now pop up in my recent see look my recents I can click on it add and now it's attached right here so if I choose to post um, it will immediately be seeable for all of my first period students. If my little Chrome box wasn't sitting there, there's also a carrot key that you can click and you can choose to save as a draft. And that's what I did with that ecology right. simulation lab. So I'm going to go ahead and post it because it's not going to hurt anything. Um, but now it's going to live right here at the top. Now, if I'd chosen to attach it to a topic, it would add itself to the bottom of that topics list. So you can see from my unit eight, I had a lot of stuff. And so there's an option to view more. And so it'll load even more. But it is the thing, the list under the topic will populate according to when it was posted. So now, you can move things around in there now, right? Yes. So if I wanted to move um, this snork project down here to after the test, all I have to do is drag and drop it, um, which is something that has only happened in the new year since 2019 has started. That was another thing that teachers gave a lot of feedback from. Now, this is an example of a question, and you can tell based on the icons what kind of post this is because it has a question mark that tells me it's a question. Um, and it'll tell me I've got 27 that completed it. So if I click on view question, what happened? 
I clicked too fast. Let's go back. I'm just, I'm just grateful the altar is holding on to you. Hallelujah. All right. So if I click on this question and I say I want to edit it. So I click on the meatballs. So I don't know. In our district, we call it the ham. The menu is the hamburger. The three dots is the meatballs. This is the pancake, or no, the waffle. Um, the one of one of our thing. One of our people said they must have been hungry when they were naming all these things. Um, but this is the question that I asked, and sometimes this type of question, I did not want them to see each other because I wanted them to be honest with me. Um, so what was the best thing about winter break for you? I have it turned off that they will not see each other's responses, nor can they respond to each other, but they can edit their responses. And I chose this to be a short answer question. And the other option would have been to uh, do a multiple choice. So that works really well. Um, if you want to have like a, just a real fast formative assessment at the end of your lesson and you want to know where they stand. So that's a question. Um, I'm going to create something else. I'm going to create a material um, for this. So in science, I like to have in the news articles. So I'm going to add this thing about the Louisville Zoo mega caverns thing that happened yesterday. And all you did is you went to where it is on the web, you copied the link, Mm -hmm. and, gonna put it in. and so I copy and paste the title as well, right. just because the title's usually better than what I can go. Okay, so Louisville Zoo Mega Cavern closed after sinkhole discovered. There's the link to get to the WDRB article. And then under topic, I have in the news and um, science current events posted. And I'm going to post this for all five of my classes. And the reason I do this is because in our human geography classes, they do current events every week. Um, so, and it rotates what type of current event each student has to have. Um, but local is one of the options for some kids at some points. So I like to do this just as an option to that cross-curricular stuff. So that's going to add. And as you can see, it's not at the top of my screen. I'm going to have to scroll down here to my in the news science current events to see it. And you can see I post all kinds of stuff. Earlier this week, I posted about a vaccine debate because the measles outbreak and all the interesting things. And there were four articles um, that I attached to it just because these are cool science things. And in trying to get kids to be aware of why science is important in the real world. So there's blood tests could detect Alzheimer's. Um, amoebas was interesting for my kids because we watch Amoeba Sisters a lot. And um, we talked about Mars Opportunity. And this was a young girl. She's the younger sister of a girl I graduated high school with, and she bought a farm while she's still in college. Um, this U.S. built capsule with a dummy aboard, and you know they sent that eight-day mission with the dummy. Um, to test the impact on the human body, trying to decide if it's going to work or not. They've come out with the uh, women's spacewalk, so that's another one I've got queued up ready to share with them. But that's some of the things I do. Now, if I wanted to create an assignment for them, I would click on Assignment. And I would give it its title. I would give it its instructions. So if I wanted to go ahead and do Science Starters... week 4-1 because next Monday will begin the new nine weeks and um, at the beginning of the year and after Christmas I gave specific instructions of what I expected every day they post a separate private comment they need to number or letter their answers each answer gets its own row I gave very specific information but we're you know three-fourths of the way through the school year they know what the expectation is so I've got the name, I'm not putting instructions because I don't need to. Um, I could if I had to, I don't want to. Topic, I don't have, look, I've got science starters, first nine weeks, second nine weeks, third nine weeks. I don't have a topic, so this is where I need to create a topic. Mm -hmm. So I probably have topics in my head, I just don't create them until I actually need them. 
So I don't need to write the word create. So this is science starters fourth nine weeks. So then just like before, I'm going to go to my drive and I'm going to go find it and attach it. And so last year I went through and I made um, my science starters for each week. And so there's individual ones, but then there's also the weeks. So this is science starters week four dash one. So if I want to go in, I don't know how many points this needs to be worth. I'm going to click on it. And then I'm going to go through and figure out how many questions I've got total. Um, and I usually have a starter slide, a title slide. It'll have which week it is, but then it also, like I've done like National Reading Week, I had books, and um, Valentine's Week, I had hearts. I That's the elementary in me coming out, I'm pretty sure. But I can go through and check how many points I'm going to need, and then I go over back over here and tell it how many points I need. Now, this is a cool feature that assignments do. You can choose for students to view files. So this is a file I want them to view, but I don't want them to have editing access to. So I, they're going to view file. That's it. Um, but if I wanted them to edit a file and um, say I had a slide deck whenever we do argument driven inquiry and we do when we're setting up our initial arguments, they work in groups. There is they. And so each group is assigned a different slide number. And so I want them all to edit the same slide deck. Um, so I would choose that students can edit file. The other option is to make a copy for each student. So in that same. Um, argument driven inquiry, like if I need them to um, be able to edit the post lab questions, I need them to answer those individually. I'm going to choose to make a copy for each student. And when we do that, um, it names the file that they're going to answer on. It'll say Carrie Gupton dash enzyme ADI post lab questions. And so that's naming conventions you know it's named it has their first name and last name but it's also named whatever i named the assignment so that way it's easy for me to find through my drive it's easy for them to find through their drive um and it just works if i wanted them to attach something so if i assign this and i'm going to go i'm going to ex i'm going to just close that so see because i just closed it it's going to save it as a draft for me um, if I go back to here, and let me go find an assignment that Schmidt gave us. Yeah. So, see, this is the PD evaluation. That was the Google form for us to complete. But if she wanted us to attach something on their side, um, of course, I would have the directions up here that says, you know, please, number one, do this, number two, do this, number three, turn it in here by attaching it. So if it's something they're going to attach maybe from Canva or somewhere else, they would choose to add it like this and they could drop, add it from drive link file. File would be uploading from the device. Um, but if it, if I want them to create the doc from here, I would choose create. And if it's going to be done in doc slides, drawings, whatever, if I chose to create it as a slide, watch what it's going to name for them. See, it's now named what the assignment was named with my name on it. So that, like, I love that aspect. That way my, it makes it easier for kids. They don't have to worry about that untitled presentation mess. If they will start from the assignment and create from the assignment, if they're working in G Suite, you know, it takes care of the naming convention for them. So they're not, oh, what would I name this again? And mm -hmm. um, it just makes it easier. So I'm going to exit that because we're not really going to do that. Um, but going back over here, what else can I do for you? I think at this point, I'm looking at Mark, who's sitting right across from me here. Are you boggled or are you, you stayed with her? Mm -hmm. uh, this is, I think what we're seeing here that I really, really like, Carrie, is there's so much packed in here where we're seeing, okay, so how do we do the differentiation? Well, look at what I can do. Mm -hmm. I can create something. I can send it to 
different kids who have different needs. You know, it's, it's like everything goes back to that creation piece. And when you do the creation piece, then you can go in and modify it and send it out to different kids through what you just showed us there. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that I think is so powerful here is the fact that kids can be assigned to do something that is requiring them to do demonstrations of understanding. It's yes. not just a, a, you know, here's, here's my little formative multiple choice test and I go through and maybe I, I get lucky. Mm -hmm. But if I do a demonstration of understanding, go to slides, go to docs, whatever. And then so, do your understanding and show it to me. Something else I wanted to show you, because if you're creating something, you want to post it at the same time for all your classes, you can do like I showed you. But say you want to schedule, and this is a big thing that I do, especially if I want to do stuff, but I don't want my kids to work ahead. I will create an assignment in one class and I will schedule it for that class. But then I go into my next class and I'm going to click on this reuse post because Lord help us. We do not need to reinvent the wheel. No. And so if I wanted to reuse this bonding quizzes game, I'm going to click on it. I'm going to say, use this. And so see right there where it said create new attachments. I've got that unchecked. There's no need for that. That should never be checked. I don't know why that's an option. Okay, so here's the title. It reuses the title. It reuses the instructions you had for it. It reuses the point value you had for it. I'm pretty sure. It reuses the topic you had for it, and it reuses all the links that you had. So quizzes. Notice folks, quizzes. Let, me, let me interrupt you. Notice folks who teach in secondary. She's got a mobile link as well as a web link. Mm -hmm. So again, what we're saying to kids is, yeah, you've got the device. Let's now use it in a way that actually impacts what you're doing at school instead of just texting each other. In other words, your phone. Yes. Gary's got it right here. And I didn't come up with that. Quizzes does that for me. So I created the quiz. Right. game in quizzes and they have the Google Classroom hook. Do you want to post this to Google Classroom? And so I chose which class. It'll pull up a small window that gives me this assignment option and it will automatically provide the mobile link and the web link. Now I kind of wish it, they didn't have the mobile link listed first. I guess it's alphabetical. I don't know. Because I had to have conversation with my students about how when we're on our Chromebooks, Chromebooks are yeah. using the web. So we right. need to choose the web link um, but because my expectation is you're going to use technology in my class every day and if you don't have your Chromebook you better have a backup plan. I've got a lot of my kids who have Classroom downloaded on their devices on their cell phones because if you don't have your Chromebook you better find another way to make this work and so I'm one of the teachers that if do you have data on your phone great get busy pull up Google Classroom. And um, there are other teachers that can't stay in the side of cell phones. You know, I'm I'm somewhere in the middle of if I need you to pay attention, I'm going to tell you cell phones need to be face down in your pocket or in your backpack so we're not distracted. I should not see any earbuds. I will let you know when you can get them back out. Because they they appreciate knowing the clear defined boundaries and they know whenever they're doing independent work uh, they can listen to their music if they want to if they've got their work done or they're working diligently and i see they're checking snapchat as long as it's a real fast check i'm not going to say anything to them but if they are super distracted i'm going to help them i'm going to give them those cues and prompts and say hey put your phone down and then if it happens again then i'm going to take your phone for the rest of the class period um, because that's the expect our school expectation is if a staff member asks you to hand over your phone because we're not supposed to use phones during class time, you better do it. Um, and usually I only have to take away their phone for the class period once. Um, very rarely do I end up having to turn it into the office because they learn very quickly what is and isn't okay with me. So the mobile link is there for kids that need it. Um, but the web link is what we use most of the time. So if I choose to assign this 
I always give it a due date because it helps everybody stay organized. But it also, in that Google Calendar, um, allows them to kind of see what's going on. And then if I click on Assign, it is now under my Unit 6 Chemistry. Now, we did bonding after isotopes, so it should be after. Um, now, another beta that Google Classroom has going on is grades, the grade book feature. I personally don't like it. Um, because I don't want to put have to do grades twice. Um, I like having the import grades feature for the Google Forms for assessments, but I don't want to have to go through and assign grades in Google Classroom and then go through and assign grades in Infinite Campus too. So All typically right. I will tell on when I create the assignment, I will give it a point value, but whenever I go through to actually grade it, like with my science starters or something else, um, I will switch it over to ungraded. And I'll show you, like, whenever I have this open, this carrot key, I will choose to make it ungraded. We're going to update this. And then that way I can go through and I will click on names individually. And there's no work here, so it's not easy to see. But our Chromebooks are touch screen, so I will have one hand on the class list and I'll use my other hand to scroll through their work like if they've got private comments or if they've turned in attachments and then I will come back over here to my infinite campus tab and I'll put the grades in over there just because the, I'm not doing double the work Google Classroom you can get when, over that. when I was at my meeting um, the other day at JCPS they're working with a uh, you know hired gun a Google consultant and they're trying to get that capability in place. They're trying to so integrate. Classroom and Infinite Campus will talk to each other without you having to jump through the double hoop like you're describing. Everybody complains about that. Yes, I, I would be fine. If they integrated, then we would be kosher. But I am not doing double the work right now. There's plenty of work to do without doing that. So I'm not doing that. Now, something I like to, this is something um. We have what's called academic time every day. It's after second period. It's about 35 minutes or so. And it's kind of like homeroom. Like if a kid's been absent, I can pull them to take a test. Or if they've got a bunch of missing work, I can pull them to work on their stuff. If they've been absent and they need extra help, they need extra tutoring, they can't stay after school for whatever reasons, we use AT for that. Um, so we have different days that we do different kinds of things. And one of... I think Monday, I forget what she calls it, but I call it get your life together. Um, so one of the get your life together um, things is for them to realize that in their Google Classroom for each class, they have this upcoming box. And so it'll show them this is due tomorrow. If you click on view all, it will take them as a teacher. I had the to do page. But as a student, they will also have a to-do page that they can also do based on individual classes or they can see all their classes. And it organizes it based off of due dates. So this is one of the get your life together hacks that I teach them. Um, they could also go to their Google Calendar um, from here. And I teach them how to use Google Calendar. Uh, I'm going to open a different tab for Google Calendar. So I changed it and I don't have the, I like having these pretty pictures that open this Getty add on. So, but if you had your typical Google, you know, you'd have your waffle and you could click here. And so that that's how I've rearranged mine. You can see drive calendar, classroom, YouTube, Gmail, keep. These are the things I use most often. So I wanted them here. There's more stuff like docs, slide sheets. I don't need the, I don't start a doc from docs here. I start it either from drive or, yeah, from drive, usually the folder I want it in. Yeah, perfect. So, we'll go back to drive. so mm -hmm. this is all the other stuff that's possible. I don't want any of that up here, cloud in my space. This is what I want. So if I click on calendar, um, and I've actually, um, I have in, integrated I've got my Google Calendar attached to my iPhone iCalendar um, I also have it attached to our Alexa in the kitchen and so it will scroll upcoming events 
on our Alexa in the kitchen, which is helpful for my husband and I to make sure we're not missing anything. Um, and it's also nice for me whenever we're working, you know, in my phone, regardless of where I am, I can see what all's going on. So, and you can choose, as you can see, I've got most of my classes turned off because I don't want to see their calendar in here. I don't need to know when their assignments are due. I know when their assignments are due. Um, but Google Calendar, I like to look at it a month at a time, and I show them how easy it is to use Google Calendar. Click, add a title and name, give it a time. You can go into more options. Um, a couple weeks ago, I did a uh, demo of Classcraft with some of my previous teacher friends from the previous school system I worked in, um, and I added conferencing. We did a Google Hangout um, instead of using Collaborate Ultra or whatever, we use Google Hangout. Um, see, Hangouts meets. So cool. And you add your guest, and whenever you add them, it will send an email invitation. It's so seamless. And so then they will get that email, and it will show up in your Google, but also their Google. So I love this so much. Um, it just you know, makes we have our, uh, our Blackboard meeting. Uh, this is something I'm going to show them. I'm going to show them Hangouts. I'm going to show them how easy it is, you know, to create this kind of um, video conferencing capability that Google has. I There's just so much here that is, to me, the, the beauty of it all is the simplicity of it all. Yes. That's well, what makes And also, you know, STLP, our region, had a crazy, ridiculous... You know, the first regional event that we had scheduled, there was a freak snow day, and yeah. half the region wasn't able to go to U of L's SAC right. on that day. And so we had a makeup day finally in February, but that ended up being another snow day. So we ended up doing virtual uh, presentations, STL presentations. Well, we did that through Google Meets. You know, we did a meet. They We set up rooms because whenever you create that, invitation and you say that you want to add conferencing and have a Google Meet, it will create a unique URL, um, which all you have to do is you, whoever the organizer is and the other person, you click on that link and then you're both there. And you can have up to, I think, I think it's 50. Yes. Yeah, you can have up to 50 people. I mean, it was glorious. Now, it freaked my students out because they're teenagers and you know, while they're all about the texting and Snapchatting and all that, the idea of, and I told them, I'm like, guys, it's like a big FaceTime. That's all it is. You're FaceTiming yeah. these judges. Right. And, but it was still, it was different and it freaked them out, but I love it. It's, yeah, they get all upset about the sh shot up the nose and, and all yes, that, yes. that stuff. But again, the thing that we're seeing here is this convergence idea that we're finally getting to the point where people coming together, um, you know, when you first started hearing about online classes and synchronous, the thing was, well, we'll all just be in one big virtual classroom and see each other and do everything together. And when you did that, it all bogged, it all quit, it all crashed. But mm -hmm. what we're seeing now with, with this idea behind Hangouts and Meets is, yes, it works. It work and then, of course, who does Google have under their umbrella as well, YouTube. So yes. anything that we create in those two venues can be sent out to YouTube. Again, it's, it's convergence. It's happening. Can I pull this back from you or do you want to finish up? I wanted to show you one more thing. This is one of the, oh, one more, one more thing. Okay. So one of my other get your life together things that I've showed my students is Google keep. It is one of those things that's not very, well, I think it's underutilized quite a bit. Um, but this is something I showed my students, and it wasn't just my ATV. I showed all my classes. And so I am very much a paper planner person. I like my paper planner. I order a special one off Etsy as, you know, a special teacher planner because I want it the way I want it. Um, I like my desk calendar on my desk. Um, but I also like having my digital stuff. And so... You lost me. Yeah, we saw what you had, but we just lost your just now. Okay. 
I saw your little notes you made about what I was talking about. Well, yes. Okay, here we go. All right, so Google Keep um, and all at keep.google.com, you can set up notes and you can set up reminders. And so the cool thing is, I showed my students, if you set up reminders and you have Keep downloaded to your phone, it'll show up as a notification on your phone, just like all the other notifications you have set up. So that, also in calendar, you can set up alarms like a day before, an hour before, a week before, et cetera. So teaching our kids how to make all of their technology work seamlessly together to make their lives more organized. Because while I like my paper planner, um, I, ha I probably have about six to 10 kids who actually use paper planners. And then they forget things. I'm like, guys, you've got to get more organized. And they're like, well, I don't know what to do. I'm like, here, let me show you how easy this is. And I make them pull up their calendar and, you know, make themselves a little event to remind, remind, remember something. But I've also showed them how to use Keep. So in Keep, you make notes. So, yes, for class today, I've got some notes about what you've been talking about. But I also have, you know, at Aldi, these are things we like to buy. Carrie's buying at Sam's Club this week. Yes, this is what I like to have at Sam's Club. And whenever you turn on check boxes, which you can see not all of my things have check boxes, but when you turn on check boxes, when you check it, it'll come down here to the bottom of the list. When I want them again, I just uncheck it and it moves itself back up to the top of the list. Mm -hmm. You know, so these are, this is, you know, I, e I texted you earlier, Steve, and then I emailed you, mm -hmm. you know, this is my reference that I use about this is what I need, this is what I still need to do. And I can post in the you know who's URLs you? to get this stuff. Is it Sue or is it somebody else? I'm asking Mark your question. Oh, okay. Do you know? I don't know? I know she does the math one. But carry with, and that's 676, I think. Okay. I'm going to find that out throughout for her. So Fine. something. Something else that Keep will do is you can use, like, they call them labels, but they're tags, just like we were talking about earlier, the um, the tags from blog post. Yeah. So you can choose a background color. So I've got different colors mean different things. Like our school color is green, so anything that has to do with school is green for me. Uh, UofL, this is the closest to red the options are. And um, this has to do with me, this, my keyboard shortcuts, that's school, but it's also technology. Um, and if you want it to make sure it's easy to access, you pin it. So it's at the top of the list. Um, but if you don't care, then we've got things down here. So I've got like technology notes. These are things I want to come back to from Alice Keeler. Um, ditch that textbook. Um, and then I've got... You know, someday we're going to go to St. Louis as a family. Well, these are all the cool things there are to do and what the costs are currently. Just, it's a way to organize my stuff. These are assignments I need to work on for my two classes. You know, these are house things I would like to do. I've got my library number because I need to remember it to log in occasionally like I don't have as many things on here but I've got kids who will this is how they take notes they don't have a pen and paper notebook they take notes in class this way sure. it floats their boat cool beans I've got kids that they use this to remember assignments they need to do cool beans and as you can see you can remind me you can add a collaborator. So last year, last summer, when they wanted me to lead a PD at our in-district, um, one of our in-district PD days, and I had to share the name and the description, all that, well, instead of emailing the person in charge, I just added as a collaborator. I just shared my note with them because that was easier. This is where you change color. You add an image. So using the Chromebook, um, I use the keyboard shortcut to take um, snapshots. So hold on. I'm trying to remember. So see how my screen changed color? Did you see it? Yeah. Did the did. screen get darker? Yep. Did. Okay. So if you click on Control-Shift and then on Chromebook, it's the Extend 
button, um, you can choose to only take a screenshot of a particular section. So whenever I'm recreating, whenever I'm making new forms from old Word docs or Google docs or whatever, and I just want like the diagram because, you know, in science we do a lot of interpreting diagrams and tables and all the things instead of me going through the work of rewriting those things or trying to redraw them or something i will screenshot it like this and so you can see my little crosshairs and if this is what i want i adjust it and then it will download to my computer so see this is my picture if i want to save that picture i'm going to add an image here's my screenshot right here i'm going to add it and now it's there so if I need to hold on to that picture and I need to be able to access it across my devices because I've got a desktop at school and I'll have my Chromebook, I actually have two Chromebooks at school because I have my one loaner. Um, but then we have a Chromebook at home. You know, if I need to be able to access this image because I'm not done with my form, I save it to my keep and then I have access to it across all of my devices. And that's just instead of it only being saved to the desktop or whatever. Um, in the desktop, you know, there's the paint. I still use paint occasionally, but it has become so clunky now because this makes it so much easier. And there are so many more things that I could share with you, but I know I've been talking a long time. So, well, what I wanted, the reason why I wanted you to take over tonight is I wanted people to see who are not classroom teachers yet. Um, or maybe who haven't gotten Google Classroom yet, the potential. Um, you've been using this four or five years, so obviously it's going to be this uh, full. I'm not going to call this complex. I don't find it complex. I, when I look at what you've shown us tonight, it makes perfect sense to me. I think mm -hmm. the, the beauty, what we're trying to get to is, is that if a child who comes to your classroom sits down and sees what you have in the Google Classroom and what you're saying to them in your classroom, it just all syncs up very nicely. Yes. What I want to do uh, to finish out the evening is I want to kind of take the stress level some people may be feeling right now who are sitting at home watching this and going, well, I can't make all that. That's not the point. So if you'll let me, I'm going to go back and take over. Yes. Do I need to do anything? I think I can do it. Okay. I'm going to go back and take over. There you go. Yep. And I'm going to walk folks through what the assignment is so they can understand what my thinking was uh, when I created all of this. So let me, let me see if I can walk you through this. What my thinking was when you have this thing here that says develop a sign identifying your Google Classroom using this redkid.net thing. If we go over and look at the class, and here it is, what I wanted you to see was how you do things with the various links that were down there. So if I jump back into here and I go here and I do a material, just like Carrie was showing, uh, she was showing us. When you go and look at the assignment, where it says you can begin it by creating this little diddly, which is cute. I mean, it's just cute. That's all it's for, folks. It's cute. Well, how would you get that in? Well, you could either do it by putting it in somewhere like this through the uh, uploading the actual file that you create. Or if you wanted to, in your Google Classroom, over here, where it says select the theme, you could use the themes that the Google gives you. So if I want to change what it looks like, I can go into this math science one, and I can have it that. Or if I want to use the one that I've created here, let me just jump into that real fast. There's our friend, the alphabet soup that we all just, you know, were looking at here not too long ago. And if I jump into here and say, welcome, and I go 
talk soup. There it is. Now, what I have to do here is I have to save the images. Now, when I was doing this, if I were in Carrie's world, where would this end up? Obviously, my Google Drive. Well, we're many of you probably aren't up to speed enough on that. So I'm just going to go ahead and save it. I'm going to call it, um, let's just call it Google. And I'm going to throw it on my desktop. Desktop, get it right, Steve. Now what I can do in the Google is I can come back to here and I can upload the photo. But let me show you what happens. And I get why they do this, because they want it to be, they wanted to have a really nice look about it. So I'm going to grab that photo, that picture I just did. It will upload it. You see what it says? You so say you have to play with it. If you want to do that, that's fine. Otherwise, just put it in the material thing that we were just looking at. So again, classwork, create, material. I can get it here. I can get it here. I can go to here. Bang. Boom. Okay. And then I can upload it. See, it comes in there. So I'm just wanting you to play with how to do things here more than anything. I'm not like I don't need you to feel like you have to create something as extensive and amazing as what Carrie has shown us tonight. I just want you to see how things work within here. Now, I might then, when I look back over here, so here's Steve doing his word cloud thing. With the word cloud, again, all you're doing here is you're going to go in and you're going to find some language. And I, in here, I have you going to the uh, Kentucky Core Standard. And I know I'm flying through this, folks, but I hope that you have an understanding of where all this stuff lives. And if you don't, yell at me. And I'll be glad to help you think it through. So if I want to come in here and look at uh, standards for science, scroll down through here, find the ones that have to do with science. And if you want to do it by using the, all of this, which is the overview, that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. Or if you want to go all the way down into it. And so I can go into here and I can grab this specific one that has to do with looking at uh, investigation and how you go about doing that. What I'm trying to get for you to see here is, is when you do this kind of work and you throw it into something like the word cloud, what it does is it gives you a really nice image of what it's all about. Now, if you look at it here, it's kind of like, what is it? What are we doing here? What is it? We're, we're, what's the focus of this? When I do the create, there, it shows me what the focus of this particular one is. Now, I'm not going to leave it just here. I'm going to go back when I put it in here in just a second. And I'm going to say, you know, what we're doing here is look at the standard. I'll literally paste that language in. But now I can have kids have a way of seeing it. So again, I'm going to come back here. I'll do standard, give it a name. I'm going to save it. Back over into my cloud, my classroom, excuse me. I can do the same thing. I can go into logo here. I can view material. It lets me see it. I can edit it. I'm right back to where we just were. And again, I would have saved this to my Google Classroom, but I'm going to do it this way. And I'm going to go and select the files from my folder of my computer. Excuse me. There we go. And I'm going to upload it. Okay. Now I've got the standards. 
again, I'm letting you see how to do all this. I'm holding your hand. Let's do one more because I think I've got a couple more here. Let's go back to where we locate a video associated with your content from YouTube. Well, how hard is that? I should hear my friend laughing now out there. So again, under material, I can go to edit. Hello. There's our friend. What was that? Mark, we were looking at science. Um, uh, Put in right? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to do a science investigation search inside of the Goog and YouTube. Okay. And eventually I might have to go back and look at what is it we're doing? Maybe we're doing something with pulleys. What am I doing? So I can grab that and throw it in as well. Again, I am not expecting you to build something as incredible as what she has. I'm just wanting you to see process here. Let me show you one more though, because I think this is something. Uh, the Beyond, can we come back and revisit Beyond when I see you all again? Um, because there's some issues with Beyond and I don't want you to get into it and get all upset and uh, freak out on me. In the Padlet, you are more than welcome to use my Padlet. So I'm going to log out and just show you. When it comes up, uh, it's going to come up and it's going to say log in. And the, you use the spswan02 at louisville.edu, password lowercase ulit241, log in. You can create your own Padlet now. By the way, you can create it without having to log in as me. You can create how you want it to look. I'm going to go through this not real quickly. I just want you to kind of see. If you come in, you can change the Padlet where it says My Stunning Wall. I'm going to go Padlet or Course. That's all. You could just change the name. And then it takes you through some steps. You want to make it public, not because everybody's going to be able to get into it and mess with it, because you'll see here in just a second when we go to share it. I'm going to go ahead and make it public. You're all set. All right. Now, what I want to do is those who have access to it, they can write. And that's great. That's what I want it to do. I might want to turn on moderation. All it's going to do is it's going to allow me to see what kids put into my Padlet before it actually gets out there to the big wide world. I'll go ahead and just leave that. Okay. And now we're ready to start posting. Ta-da! But watch. If I go up here to share, I can make sure it's saved. But if I go here to share, Looky, 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 looky. Share on your Google Classroom. So I can click on that. And it's asking me, which classroom do you want to share it on? I'll go to Swan IT. Choose the action. How about if I make an announcement or create the material? So if I make the announcement and I say go, Put your ideas about what we are doing here. Now, why would I do this? Well, I can crowdsource it. Also, it's another way for kids to see. <laughs> that's, that's not me, folks, typing that wrong. It's my keyboard, not putting the here there. Kids can see what others are thinking in multiple ways. And you know this already because you all have played with these. There's our Padlet. I click on it. Now I'm over here from my class. And when I double click on it to put it in, remember what we can put in here. So I can either add something. I can put a link in from somewhere else. I can Google something and put it in here. I can add a snapshot and put it in here. More, 
Well, there you are, folks. Okay? Just want you to see how this amazing ability now, and I, I know I've hit this word too many times tonight, but this amazing ability to do convergence is what, to me, is where we are now. Is we have this incredible ability to pull in so many other things. Now, let me jump back. One of the cool things about Vion, um, I'm going to go ahead and show you Vion. We'll, we'll look at locate one or more apps and all that. We'll do the sites thing. Let me show you Vion, and then we'll call it an evening. Well, you know, I cannot show you Vion because I've got the wrong link, but that's okay. I'll fix it. We're going to go to something called Vion. What does Vion do? Vion lets you make your own cartoons, your own movies. And again, it's the same login as we just used for the Padlet, svswan at louisville.edu, ulit 241, login. This always pops up. Uh, they know it. It's a bug. What I can do is make a video. I can pick my style. Carrie, you need to look at this one. This is where you can go in and actually look like you're drawing on the screen. I'm going to go ahead and grab the business friendly one because it's just kind of, it's the easiest one, frankly. Although none of these are hard. I've seen kids explain their understanding of physics. I've seen kids explain their understanding of genetics. I've seen kids um, go in and do where they will create a cartoon to illustrate what they have been studying in Shakespeare. So I've had kids go in and create their own quick stories. Uh, I think the teacher called it quick spear where they would basically say, okay, so this is what Macbeth was about. I'm going to create my own little cartoon to show you what Macbeth is about that I had experienced. For those of you who don't know about Macbeth, his wife cheats on him, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, can we find um, Romeo and Juliet in our own lines? Of course, you know. So here we are. So we're in it. We can go in up here where it says character. And we can create our own avatar within here. So I could have Carrie goes in here and she creates her own avatar that demonstrates it looks like Carrie. I'm going to go ahead and cancel that. It's easy enough to do. You just basically go through and you pick what you want your character to look like. When I get to here, here are the props that I can use in my movie I'm going to create. You can actually create charts that will show up over there in that where you're writing on it. I can create little signs. If I want to add a title, you can see here that there's one. Look at this one, kids. I can add music. Now, because this is HTML5, it always has to have a placeholder where the scene would go. Well, I don't want to use that scene. So I can go over here and add my own scene using a template. And let's just get one boring here. Let's do education. I can grab, this is Carrie standing up in front of her class. Now, I'm going to get rid of this scene because I don't need it anymore. Because I have my own scene that I'm going to use as my placeholder. So I'll go ahead and get rid of it. Now I'm ready to use the scene that I have created. Everything within this scene, when I click on it, you'll notice is accessible. So what can I do with this? Well, let's go back to the teacher here and click on her. First of all, if I wanted to, I could go find a character to put in here. So if I wanted to have someone different to put in, I can. Uh, if I have created my own special character, I can put that character in. Okay. But you notice it has all these, uh, you know, different categories of what you can put in. I'll go ahead and leave this one here. When I click on her, you'll notice up here it changes. Now I have the ability to have my character have an action. I can have my character have an expression. And then here we go, kids. I can actually have some dialogue that I create. 
And so I can click on that. I can add the dialog. I can either literally record myself talking and it will lip sync it. I can come down here to text to speech and I can then type in what I want my character to be saving, a saying, excuse me. I said, it's not me, it's Deport, I swear. Today's lesson is about something. I can change the voice. Pay attention because things are going to get really interesting very quickly. As you can see, I have all these different dialects that I could use that speak English. Or now it gets really interesting. Let's go find a female for that. Okay, so you can assign that video, I mean that, that audio, and when you do that, you'll notice right below it, it drops it in right underneath it. So what else could I do? I could pick this kid and have him talk. I could then pick this kid and have him talk. Let me do that real fast to show you what I mean. So if I have him come in here and talk, text to speech, remind me next week to get another keyboard. Probably me nuts. Okay, now I'm going to have a male talk, and I'll have him talk in English. And you'll see that he'll appear right below her. But if I don't want them talking over each other, I have to slide him over just a little bit. And I have to drag the scene out just a little bit so that he fits within the talking and the scene. Okay. I'm going to save it. I can share it. And I can share it with a link. I can now copy that link, go back into my class, go back into my little announcement thing where I've been putting everything. I'm going to use the link. So now what I'm showing you is we can add a file from either uploading it or from our, our Google Drive, which is the preferable way to do it, by the way. We can put a video in or we can link in something totally different. So, Steve? Yep. I very rarely make an announcement because it gets lots in the okay. of the scrolling. So, so, my things are always either a material an assignment, a quiz, or a question. Very, very rarely do I actually do an announcement just because it gets lost in the scrolling and the kids can't find it. I agree. You're a pro. I'm just showing <laughs> people who are starting out. I, I just wanted you to know. It, from, you from do it any way you want to because I'll recognize what you're doing. Yes. So let me show you what happens, gang. So you see I got a link here. If I click on that link, there we are. So it takes me to the video. Um, why would I use this? As I said, I've seen so many teachers use this as a way for kids to create understanding of content. And as I say to what I was teaching a 201 class today, this is more fun than a box of puppies. You, know, you just you're having a really just a good time doing this now. This would be what I would expect kids to do. What I would expect us to do would be, again, in here, is I would have the link to Padlet in here that would, excuse me, to Vion that I would allow kids to then go into and create. Um, issues that we've had, and these are issues that we've had with the Vion. I have an account with them that should allow you all to go in under my 
username and password. But as you saw, when I logged in that first time, I got that, oh, somebody else has already logged in this way. Do you want me to kick them off? Even though you say that, it won't kick them off. They're supposed to recognize that on the back end and allow then for you to come in. In other words, a whole class of 28 people could all log in as me, and it gives them the ability to create at the same time. We're seeing problems with that. So all I'm asking you to do at this point is to go in and create, I call it a, let's see, I think I have it over here. An introduction to your students of the virtual classroom, a content commercial. And by the way, I'll fix this link. A content commercial. Why would I want to use or learn about uh, science from Miss Gupton? Well, she's going to put that in there as a hook. She's going to put it in and say, here's the cool stuff we can do. It's a commercial. So the longest it ought to be is between 30 and 60 seconds. Okay. I'm going to stop there tonight. Like I said, I'm going to fix this. Uh, and then when you get back together again, we'll take a look at, because it won't take as long, and then we'll look at how you can use a site's web page, because really, I want to come back to the site's web page when we look at some of the material that we'll be looking at in the next module to allow them. Are you a FET user, Carrie, to use the FET stuff that's out there? Um, I use them occasionally during my physics units. Um, but not biology is my main thing and there's not many biology fets. No, so there's not much fets. You're right. It's mostly physics. Um, with a little bit, a little bit that's in there that, uh, folks in elementary school can use. So I hope I've, we, I really feel good about what we've done tonight because for those of you who are novices, I just walked you through a very straightforward, simple, easy to do. If you want to use material please do don't don't you know mimic what i did but you'll you'll notice right away what do you have in the material you got the same four choices down here at the bottom um, if you want to show off and go in and make a topic that would be called um welcome to my class And within that, then, you can put in the uh, material, just like you saw Carrie do and, and I do. Uh, see? So you could go in, you could create a material, you could put all the things that we were just playing with inside of here, and then put it into that welcome topic. You go right ahead. You know, I'm, I'm looking at this. Let's see. Can I go up here and do that? Sure. I can copy my link of the thing that I just made. And I can, uh, no, I can't. Shoot. I can't. What you need to do is you need to edit that my logo. Click on the meatball, yeah. edit my logo, and then edit it. And throw it into the topic. Yep. Okay. Duh. <laughs> This is why I love working with this stuff because the power of this is in the conversations that kids have and the power of the Google drive and the Google docs and slides and sheets is in the collaborative nature. I don't know if you've ever had to do a collaborative document inside of word. You just want to kill yourself. It's just so when you do it inside of Google docs, it's so simple. It's so easy to do. And the power of slides is, kids working together, building a presentation of their understanding that then goes into the classroom. It's easy. Okay, Carrie, I owe you one. If I see a Kisty, uh, are you, you're going to be there without kids, right? Well, I will. I'm bringing my smallest because she's still nursing and well, you've um, got your I am coming as a chaperone. Okay. Well, yeah, I'm ha yeah, I'm coming as a chaperone for my student, and then I will have my youngest with me. Okay. We'll have to get together sometime and yeah. just sit and, and kibitz together. Thank you so much for doing this for us tonight. You are welcome. Uh, again, as always, everybody, if you have questions, concerns, Carrie will testify that when she sent me a, a uh, 
link today, a message today, she got an answer right back. Yes, if I do. If you have questions or concerns, five zero. Oh, no, you don't have to do that. Four five seven two nine three seven. Let me know. Uh, those of you who are at the University of Louisville, I hope you realize that next week is your spring break. So we will not be visiting with you next week. Good time to be asking me questions, especially those of you who may have concerns about the live text, because uh, I'll still have my phone with me, even though I won't be here at the University of Louisville, I will be somewhere where I'm always in touch with you. Thank you, everybody. And again, Carrie, thank you. This was great tonight. I'm going to shut it down.